Okay, uh, this is going to take you through how to um, create a group and then what you can do with some of those things um, in a group. So the first thing that I have here is pretty straightforward. It's, um, it's essentially just code to, to move a sprite. So I have two sprites. I have a wall sprite and I have a hero sprite that I can move with WASD. Uh, so I can move them up, down, left, and right. Um, and now I want to set a collider type between these two so that the hero um, collides against the wall. So to do that, uh, remember I just have to do the collider um, inside the draw loop every time. So I'm just going to create a new function for that. Um, I'm going to call it detect collision and inside of de detect collision I'm going to say that the um, sprite collides target so we're going to have hero collides with the wall and then I need to call that within um, this so detect collision so now when I run it um, I should hit the wall and, and not be able to move through it like I did the last time. So this works out well. Okay. Now what happens if I want to make um, an actual barrier? So put more walls here. Well, I'd have to create another wall. So I would do a copy, paste, and we'll call this wall 2 and we will set wall 2 just above wall 1 so it's y value um, they're 40 tall uh, for my walls so I'm gonna make this at 160 and it should make our walls continuous right there but again I only have detection on one so I can go through the second one uh, but not the first so what do I need to do well I need to add another collision detection and do a wall 2 and run that and now I should not be able to get through that wall so I could do this and imagine making a maze you know out of these wall blocks um, setting them all over the place I might have 50 um, different wall blocks sitting in there which would be crazy um, to to have I mean I'd, I'd have to make 50 sprites here and I have to set 50 collision detections so to simplify this we can actually create a group and that's where it comes in really handy is if you're going to do a lot of the same things a group is essentially an array or a list of um, items so we're going to call the, this list walls and then we're going to add individual wall items to this group so I'm going to use this group.add sprite and I'm going to say walls.add sprite and I'm going to create the sprite just like that. And I'm going to remove that. And now I can do the same line of code. And now I'm going to put in five walls. So I'm going to put one at, I'm going to start at the bottom of the screen here. So that X coordinate is going to be 20 above the bottom. So it's going to be 380. And I'm going to go every 40. So it's going to be 340, 320, or 300, and then 260, and 220. I'm going to get rid of this. Set animation. I'm going to get rid of wall 2. And I'm going to see what I get here. And it doesn't like it. Um, Oh, because I'm now colliding with what it doesn't know. It doesn't know what a wall is. So I'm going to just delete these for the time being, and then I'm just going to run it. Um, oh, I changed the X value. Brilliant. So let's go back and change the Y to make a vertical wall here. 340. See, we, we all make mistakes in our code, and that's why we do a few changes. We do some testing, and these are going to be now back to 200. So I'm going to copy this. Make it easier on yourself here. And now, now if you notice they're gray and they're not the right size. Um, and I can still move my hero, but there's no collision detection here. So a couple of cool little commands. 
with our group is we can do this set animation each. So I can now pull this one item in here and say walls.setAnimation each and hit wall. And when I run it, they now all look like a wall. So that's one line of code to do what I would have had to done one, two, three, four, five times for these five walls. The other cool thing is look at this. Um, see how I have these? So I can do a collide each. So now you got to think, is the group colliding with this? Um, the answer is no, it's actually displace. So this is going to be walls will displace my hero. So when I run it now, uh, use WASD, now I have all of my walls you can see I, I squirted through the bottom there, that's what happened. So I went around the bottom side of it. So you could have a cheat mode in your maze, don't tell anyone. But you could just have them so they go around the bottom and then make it to the end of the maze. But anyway, now you're saying, well, that didn't really help because I, I still had to make a lot of, you know, sprites in here. Well, here's where we talked about the for loop today. For loop is great. For creating multiple things so if you want five walls you change this variable to five and now you put one of those in there and you're like well but mr wilkins this value is changing every time you're right it's decreasing by 40. so i could then put an equation in here because this increases by one every time i could say well if i decrease it by i times 40 so the first time through i is zero so 0 times 40 is 0, so this is going to put the y value at 380. The next time through i is 1, now it's going to be 1 times 40, which is 40, and be 380 minus 40. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Now I can make my blocks there. And let's say you wanted to make 10 walls. So I can make this a 10, and now I can put a whole wall there. It goes all the way up. If I only wanted 2, I can make 2. And now you can create, using these for loops, very quickly your vertical and horizontal patterns for your walls. So I'm going to do that and kind of walk you through that in this. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste another one. And this time I'm going to do a horizontal group right along here. Okay, And I'm going to do five walls starting at 0, 0. Well, actually it's going to be at 20, 20 because um, it's at the center point of this. So I'm going to put my starting point at 20 and my starting point of my Y at 20. And this time I don't want to change my Y at all. So this time I'm going to leave my Y alone and I want to increment my X by 40 every time. So I'm going to do an I times 40 and I want five walls there. So now when I run it, it'll put my five walls there. And if you wanted to turn on debug sprites, you can actually see your walls. Okay. And then if you wanted to do a vertical one, starting right here, and go down this way. So again, I'm going to set up another for loop. Copy that. Paste it here. So where's my first coordinate? If I look right here, it's going to be roughly um, an X of 180 and a Y of 60. So put your cursor there and get those values right here. Okay, 180, 60. So um, my X was 180, my Y was 60, but now I don't want to change my X values. They're going to, because it's a vertical one going down. And because I'm going down, I'm going to be increasing my Y value by 40 every time through that incrementer. And let's say I just want it to be four. So there's one, two, three, four. So I want a row of three or a column of three after this one and again you can see I added three to there so I could build my maze really quickly now and now when I use my W oops so make sure that when you are um, when you're uh, testing your program don't have your cursor over here like click back on your main screen now look this all blocks my motion.
Now let's say I want these two to be up here in this space. So again, here's my midpoint. That would be 180, 180. So I'm going to put it at 180, 220 right here. So again, back at the top of my first for loop, um, it's going to be at 180 for my x. And this is going to start at 220. And because I'm going down the page again, I'm going to make this a plus. And I want to I want to put like five or six. So let's try five this time. And there we go. So now we have an opening for our character to go through. Again, you can still go outside the back, but if you want to put walls on the sides, it's pretty straightforward now. You can do, um, I'll do show blocks so I can create that. So let's say I want, uh, let's do a horizontal one all the way across the bottom so you can't sneak out the bottom. So we'll copy this, we'll paste it. We can actually put it off the screen so it's you don't actually see it. So down here would be, so this is uh, 400 in the Y, so it's going to be 420 in the Y. And we're going to start at 20 in the X. So we're going to start, um, X is 20, Y is going to be 420. Again, let's go back to text mode to get rid of this. And we're going to increase the X value this time. So I'm going to cut and then paste that right there. And it's going to take how many bricks if they're 40 a piece? It's going to take 10 bricks to go all the way across. So now when I reset and rerun, you're like, oh, it's not there. Well, if I move my sprite down, it is there. So I can't sneak through the bottom now and I can put walls all the way around. So I can put walls outside of this. So right in here, let's do a vertical wall again. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it. It's gonna be negative 20. It's gonna be off the screen, 20 that way. And then I want to put my incrementer on my Y. I'm gonna start my Y at 20 and work my way down. Cut this and paste it here. Again, 10 blocks again. So now I shouldn't be able to move. I'm kind of bound in this space. Can't move there. Only way out is now through that opening. And again, if you looked at your debugger, you have tons of bricks now. Um, but they're all managed by a single line of code right there on collect on your um, Detecting collisions now What if you want to access an individual block? That's what my next um, Video will show if you want to access an individual wall Let's say for example that you run into the wall and when you run into the wall um, It changes color and you want to know this one that it touches and change the color of that one. So let's say that you've got to like knock down a wall and you've got to hit it a few times before you knock it down. So we can do that. Um, we'll do that in our next video.